RGB parade, Luma waveform, vector scope, histogram, all of these tools are designed to help us to understand what's going on in an image. But there is one other tool nobody talks about that will help you gain full control over the colors in your image. In photography, it's very common to use so-called check layers. You use them, for example, to spot any irregularities when retouching, and there are many different check layers for color monitoring as well. I always love the philosophy behind check layers. You turn off everything that is not important at the moment and focus on the only thing you need to focus on. For example, when I'm adjusting exposure and contrast, I disable all the color information, since you will see colors will trick a perception of brightness. Have a look at this image and study it for a second. Which square is the brightest and which square is the darkest? It's not so easy to tell, is it? Of course, we could press Command and 7 and bring up our scopes, so we could see, okay, yellow is the brightest, cyan is the second brightest, and red is the darkest. But what if you need the context of your scene to decide your next step? Oftentimes, you need a contextual understanding of your scene to manipulate exposure and contrast in the best way for your story. To do that, I will disable my scopes, go into my effects and grab the check layer. Now I check Luma only. And as you can see, we can tell with ease that the yellow square is the brightest, cyan the second brightest and the red square the darkest. Let's try to apply this technique to an actual shot. I will grab my check layer and put it on top of the shot. Then I will enable my scopes with Command and 7. As mentioned before, I only want to take care of exposure and contrast at the moment. So I will disable all of the color information and I do this by checking Luma only. Now I can get rid of the check layer and go to the clip. Let's bring up some color wheels. Let's have a look at what's going on. So the entire shot is fairly dark, but it's kind of a sunset mood. So let's try to keep this, but I want to make this a little bit more dramatic. I will raise my midtones just maybe like this and I will bring down my shadows. Yeah, something like this. Let's see what our highlights can do. Yeah, maybe something like this. Then I can decrease the midtones again and I'm clipping my blacks. So I want to pull that back a little. To have final control over everything, I will need to add an instance of color curves and play around with it. I will grab the curve at the 50% range and pull it down just a tad something like this. We are starting to get some believable sunset contrast. So let's put this a little bit further. I think the lower shadows are actually fine. So I will fix that in place and pull down the upper shadows just a tad more. Maybe I can lift these something like here. Okay, this doesn't look too bad. Let's have a look at what we can do to the highlights. So I'll lift them just a touch. Okay, something like this. If we disable our check layer for a second, you can see that the scene doesn't look as dramatic as it did when we viewed it in black and white. But this is the clarity in my mind I want to achieve when using the check layer. If I switch back to the black and white version, I know that the contrast ratio and exposure is exactly where I want it to be. Everything else needs to be taken care of with colors. Again, as you can see, this shot is way more dramatic than before. Let's have a look at the before and after in the color view. So this is before, this is after. It's, it's way more dramatic. But let's have a look at the black and white version again. If I enable the check layer, it's way more dramatic. So this means I would need to further the contrast with color. For example, let's add an instance of color wheels. And I know I have to run away with my highlights into the yellows to achieve some color contrast and my gamma into the cyan tones, just like that. And I think I have to bring back some warmth into the shadows. So let's have a look. Okay, something like this. Okay, now I think I run away from these greens just a tad to balance this image. So this would be the color contrast. Let's have a look at the before and after. This is before, this is after. As you can see, I'm kind of saturating my blue channel, but for the sake of this tutorial, I won't get rid of that. I just want you to understand what the check layer is meant for, to focus on one thing that is important. Usually I view it like this. First, I paint my black and white image because this is the actual brightness information. This is photography. This is painting with light. And then I fill in the colors to take care of the rest of the storytelling. A while ago, I did another video where I go through all the properties and their respective distractions. If you want to check that out, it's linked in the video description. If you're interested in picking up this check layer, you can download it for free on my website. The link is in the video description as well. 